happy Sunday. Today is Sunday, August 23rd, and it is a Relief Society Sunday, so we have another awesome lesson prepared for you. Um, we're gonna start our lesson today with our theme thought. Uh, Sister Sarah Jones will be giving us that thought, and the topic for the theme this month is Strengthen My Family. And then we'll be having our lesson given by Sister Marcia Jensen again. She's been so awesome to do our lessons the last few weeks. And her talk that she's gonna be focusing on today is A Good Foundation Against the Time to Come by Elder Stevenson. We hope you sisters have a wonderful Sunday and enjoy today's lesson. Hello, we, I was asked to talk about what our family does for, to be strengthened spiritually, emotionally, um, and what we do spiritually, the best thing for us to do is come follow me. There's no question about it. We, we try to do it every night and um, we read, we talk about it, we take time as much as we can. And um, then we also, um, our family prayers are definitely essential in our family, for our family. Um, something that has become very special is sacrament meeting. Now, that it, it's, it was before too, but it's been very special because our family is more involved in it. And also our boys go um, to, um, to the church, so that's very special too. Um, and, but for us, when we have it here at home, um, sometimes we designate um, talks or uh, testimonies and all of that, and it's very, very special to us. Um, something that is um, spiritual and special and fun is that we, before it got too hot, we were going to the temple. Since the temple was closed, it's closed. Um, we decided as a family just to get our camping chairs and put them in the van, and um, we just get a drink or ice cream or whatever, and um, and we would go to the, we have gone to the temple, um, to the parking lot, and just sit there in our chairs and talk together as a family as we enjoy either ice cream or drinks or whatever it is. And we've had such a good experience, such good experiences we've had by doing that and being able to see the temple um, and it's been so fun, so fun. Um, we love to have dinner together, a lot of food, a lot of people, but we love to do dinner together and we have dinners together basically every night and that's very important for us. And we love to play cards and we love, love to play games and we like to go um, camping. It's not my favorite, but everybody else likes it and I love being with my family so I, I do it too and, and we have a really good time and it's very inexpensive and so fun. Um, and we've done it twice this summer and um, it's been really good for our family. Um, and that's about it. We, we, love, um, we love doing um, what we call a midday prayer that we decided to do since the kids were here for a while well, the lockdown, whatever happened. And uh, we love doing that and having lunches together and doing our midday prayer that we call. And uh, that's about it. Thank you. Good morning, sisters. Time for another lesson. And today's lesson is A Good Foundation Against the Time to Come by Elder Stevenson. During the coming years, may we allow the improvements made to the Salt Lake Temple to move and inspire us. And at first I thought, this is really kind of um, interesting, but as I got into it and realized really the analogy that he was trying to make, it's very a very uh, important lesson for us today. We're gonna travel back a bit in history. On July 24th, 1847, around 2 p.m., following a very long 111-day journey with 148 members of the church, who comprised the first party to head west with Brigham Young, the then president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, sick and weak from mountain fever, entered the Salt Lake Valley. Two days later, while recovering from his illness, Brigham Young led several members of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles and others on an exploring exp expedition. William Clayton recorded about three quarters of a mile north of the camp, we arrived on a beautiful table of land, level and nicely sloping to the west. 
While surveying the spot with the group, Brigham Young suddenly stopped and marked and stuck his cane in the, on the ground, exclaiming, Here shall stand the temple of our God. Forty acres were selected for the temple, and it was decided that the city should be laid out perfectly square, north and south, east and west, the temple being the center spot. Then at General Conference in April of 1851, the members voted that they shall build a temple to the to the name of the Lord. Two years later, in February, they dedicated um, the spot for the temple. And then in April of that year, they dedicated the four cornerstones of the temple and had very many uh, elaborate celebrations to do this. At the groundbreaking ceremony, President Young recalled that he had seen a vision when he first set foot upon the ground as they surveyed the valley floor, stating, I knew then, just as well as I know now, that this was the ground on which to erect a temple. It was before me. Ten years later, Brigham Young offered the following prophetic insight at a general conference in October of 1863. I want to see the temple built in a manner that it will endure through the millennium. This is not the only temple we shall build. There will be hundreds of them built and dedicated to the Lord. The temple will be known as the first temple built in the mountains by the Latter-day Saints. I want that temple to stand as a proud monument of the faith, perseverance, and industry of the saints. of the saints of God in the mountains. Brigham Young had the foresight and the knowledge and first to ensure that the extent possible, that to the extent possible and using construction methods available, that the time and place, at the time and place, the Salt Lake Temple would be built in a manner to endure through the millennium and second, his prophesying of the growth of future and temples were of light, even to number them in the hundreds. And of course, we already have that, don't we? Uh, like Brigham Young, our prophet of today looks over the Salt Lake Temple. And uh, when Elder Stevenson was in the presiding bishopric, they did such a survey of the temple. They did a survey of the temple to make sure that it was um, still in good working order. And uh, this is the results of some of, of uh, this is some of the results of that test that they did. In the design and construction of the Salt Lake Temple, the best engineering, skilled labor, construction materials, furnishings, and other period available resources were used. Since its dedication in 1893, the temple has stood firm and served as a beacon and hope and as a light unto the people. Great care has been taken to operate clean and maintain the temple in good condition. The granite exterior and interior floor joists and support beams are in good condition. Recent studies confirm that the location chosen by Brigham Young for the temple has very good soil and excellent compaction qualities. The review concluded that normal repairs and improvements were needed to renew and update the temple, including the exterior deck and surface areas, obsolete utility systems and baptistry areas. However, consideration of a separate, more comprehensive seismic upgrade beginning from the temple foundation on upward was also recommended. And of course, since the temple was built, there's many different uh, and new technologies about making buildings earthquake proof. And so they decided, the First Presidency decided at this time that they would start this renovation to um, make the temple totally earthquake proof. And if you go to your ensign, you can see a little diagram of where they're going to shore up the foundation and the things that they do. Um, in essence, it structurally strengthens the temple to stand steadfast even as the earth and environment around it undergo an earth-shaking seismic event. Uh, the temple will be closed for approximately four years. Now let's move on to ensuring your personal foundation. Um, as the next four years of the renovation of this beautiful temple goes on, let's think of it not as a time of renewal, 
let's envision it more as a time of renewal rather than a time of closure. In a similar way, we might ask ourselves, how could this extensive renewal of the Salt Lake Temple inspire us to undergo our own spiritual renewal, reconstruction, rebirth, revitalization, and restoration? An introspective look may reveal that we too and our families could benefit from our doing some needed maintenance and renovation work, even a seismic upgrade. We might start such a process by asking, what does my foundation look like? What, compromi what comprises the thick-walled, stable, strong cornerstones that are part of my personal foundation upon which my testimony rests? What are the foundation element, foundational elements of the, my spiritual and emotional character that will allow me and my family to remain steadfast and immovable, even to withstand the earth-shaking and tumultuous seismic events that will surely take place in our lives? Those events, similar to an earthquake, are often difficult to predict and come in various levels of intensity. Wrestling with questions or doubt, facing difficulties or adversity, working through personal offenses with church leaders, members, doctrine, or policy, the best defense against these lies in our spiritual foundation. What might spiritual cornerstones of our personal and family lives be? They may be the simple, plain, and precious principles of the gospel, of gospel living, family prayer, scripture study, including the Book of Mormon, temple attendance, and gospel learning through Come Follow Me. And, home, and family home evening. Other helpful references strengthen our spiritual foundation may include the Articles of Faith, the Family Proclamation, and the Living Christ. Um, Elder Stevenson, to him, the f first four questions of the Temple Recommend interview are uh, present him with a good foundation of what uh, his foundation should be like in the Gospel. And of course, President Nelson did read these from the pulpit, so um, we are going to, I'm going to read for th through the first four right now. Um, do you have faith, number one, do you have faith and in and a testimony of God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Ghost? Do you have a testimony of the atonement of Jesus Christ and His role as your Savior and your Redeemer? Do you have a testimony of the re restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Do you sustain the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as the prophet, seer, and revelator, and as the only person on earth authorized to exercise all priesthood keys? Can you see how you might consider these questions as valuable elements in your personal foundation to help you build and reinforce it? Paul taught the Ephesians of a church which was built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone to whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple of the Lord. One of the greatest joys of President Stevenson's life is becoming acquainted with and inspired by the members of the church around the world who are living examples in faith in Christ and his gospel. They have strong personal foundations that allow them to withstand the seismic events with steady understanding despite heartache and pain. He has a personal uh, example of this, and uh, he was speaking at a funeral of a young wife and mother who had um, succumbed to cancer. She had been sick for, with cancer off and on for about six years. Uh, and despite the ever-present emotional and physical distress that she experienced, she trusted in her loving Heavenly Father and was often quoted widely by her social media followers for her famous saying, God is in the details. On one of her social media posts, she, bur she wrote that someone had asked her, How do you still have faith with all the heartache that surrounds you? She replied firmly with these words, because faith is what gets me through these dark times. Having faith doesn't mean 
nothing bad is going to happen. Having faith allows me to believe that there will be light again and that that light will be even brighter because I have walked through the dark. As much as dark, as much darkness as I have witnessed over the years, <clears throat> I have witnessed far more light. I have seen miracles. I have felt angels. I have known that my Heavenly Father was carrying me. Carrying me. None of that would have been experienced if life was easy. The future of this life may be unknown, but my faith is not. If I choose to not have faith, then I choose to only walk in darkness, because without faith, darkness is all that I have left. Her unshakable testimony of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in her words and in her actions, was an inspiration for others. And it, this is a time that we could spend talking about those that have inspired us with their faith in Christ, that we can see uh, Christ working in their lives and, and helping us as examples. Each one of our, of, each one of us has our burdens to bear and it is important that we have this foundation in Jesus Christ to help us get through these things. There are many people that are true and living spiritual example, examples. They learn of Christ, they preach of Christ, they strive to emulate him. Whether the days of their lives face steady or unstable ground, their spiritual foundation is strong and unmovable. And we think of the little song that the kids sing in primary, um, the water, <clears throat> the wise man built his house upon the rock and the rains came tumbling down. The rains came down and the floods came up and the house on the rock stood still. Scripture reinforces this foundational doctrine. The Savior taught the people of the Americas and if ye shall always do these things, blessed are ye, for ye are built upon my rock. But whoso among you shall do more or less than these are not built upon my rock, but are built upon a sandy foundation. And when the rain descends and the floods come and the winds blow and beat upon them, they shall fall. It is a sincere hope of the church leaders, leaders that the significant renovations of the Salt Lake Temple will contribute to the fulfillment of Brigham Young's prophet desire to see the temple built in a manner that it will endure through the millennium. During the coming years, maybe allow those improvements made to the Salt Lake Temple to move and inspire us. As individuals and families, so we too, metaphorically, will be built in a manner that will endure through the millennium. We will do so as we fulfill the charge of the Apostle Paul to lay up in store for ourselves a good foundation against the the times to come, that we may lay hold on eternal life. It is President Stevenson's prayer, and mine as well, that our spiritual foundation will be sure and steadfast, that our testimony of the atonement of Jesus Christ and his role as our Savior and Redeemer will become for us our own chief cornerstone. Sisters, I hope all of you are doing well. Um, this seems a long time for us to be apart. Again, I leave my love with you and talk to you in a few weeks. Thank you. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.